continuing our investigation of the properties of measures, I'm now going to give you a list of facts, which are each one is a little property. And we're going to specialize to probability measures, since we're mostly going to be concerned with probability in this video series. But it's important to remember that the previous properties, the basic properties of measures I listed in the previous video, also apply to probability measures. So these facts, that I'm, I'm going to make a laundry list here of facts, these would be good things if you're interested in really understanding this material to take as exercises and try to prove yourself. They're not, not too difficult, so they're the kind of thing where you could cut your teeth on and really get to know the material. So let's, so let's see what they are. So let, so we're going to take some omega with some, uh, so we'll let omega a p be a probability measure space. And we're going to just fix this and use the same one for all the facts. And rather than having to define new sets each time, whenever I write E or F or E, I, these are all going to be in this sigma algebra. So these are all sets. So the first fact. Here we go. The probability of E union F equals the probability of E plus the probability of F if E intersect F is the empty set. Number two. The probability of the union equals the sum of the probabilities minus oh, that's supposed to be an E the intersection in general. Three. The probability of E equals 1 minus the probability of its complement. Four. The probability of E intersect F complement equals the probability of E minus the probability of E intersect F. Five. This one's going to take a little more space. This is called the inclusion exclusion formula. It says that the probability of the union of a finite number of sets EI equals the sum over all of them. I'll just write I for the sum over all. Sum over all their probabilities minus the sum over all pairs in which I is strictly less than J of the intersection F, oh, sorry, that is an E, EJ, plus the sum over I less than J less than K, so this is all triples I, J, and K satisfying this, I, J, and K all between 1 and N, the probability of the intersection EI intersect EJ intersect EK minus now it's going to be with 4 and then we're going to so we're going to have 4 and then we're going to add 5 and then we're going to subtract 6 so it's just 
back and forth, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, until we get to the last one, and its sign is going to be what determining whether it's even or odd. And this is going to be the probability of the intersection of all of them. That's the inclusion-exclusion formula. So you can think about uh, a hint for how to think about this. If it was only three, then you're going to sum the individual probabilities, but then you've overcounted, so you have to subtract off the parts that you overcounted. So if I subtract off each of these three parts, these pairwise intersections, one, two, and three, then I'll have subtracted a little too much, so I'm going to have to add it back again. So I have to add back the part that I subtracted one too many times, which is the intersection of all three of them. That's the inclusion exclusion. Now, here's a special case of the subadditivity formula, which we claimed above, but now maybe you would like to prove uh, for yourself. Take a finite case. The probability of the union is less or equal to the sum of the probabilities. And you can consider the general case. probability of the union of a countably infinite number of sets is less or equal to the sum of all of their probabilities. So those are just a few additional facts for you. Start to train your the pattern recognition engine in your brain to start recognizing formulas for probabilities and the relationships between these formulas.